Hello and welcome to our fifth day on the journey to Christmas. Have you ever seen a film trailer where they've taken snippets of the film to come and they've put them together to give you a flavour of what's to come in that film? Um, an anticipation for what, for what you will see. They've almost given you a foretaste of the film. And the Bible writers did that as well, but they didn't use film, they used words. And in order for us to be able to unpack some of what they left for us, some of the foretaste they gave us of the Messiah and the coming kingdom, we need to understand a little bit of uh, the way that they did it. So if I was to say to you, um, oh, I'm cold as ice at the minute, you would know that I was cold. I told you I was cold, but I'm cold as ice. Um, and that would be one way for me to do that. And that's a simile. And in the Bible, they use those as well. There's times when people's eyes are described as um, uh, dark like wine or teeth are white like milk. But another way that they used to like to do it was to use a metaphor. So if I said to you, I am ice, you would have to take your knowledge of ice and you'd have to, to look at me and say, well, obviously Catherine has not turned to ice. So therefore she must be using some aspect of ice to liken to her condition. So ice is used to preserve food, ice melts when it gets hot, ice is cold. Oh, maybe Catherine's saying that she's feeling cold. And actually she said she was ice. Maybe she's feeling like every bit of her is ice and her bones are ice. Wow, Catherine must really be feeling cold at the minute. And that metaphor style is what um, a lot of the Old Testament writers really like to use. And they use them for the coming Messiah. And so it invites us, the reader, to use what we know of this picture to try and understand a little bit of what the Messiah was going to be like and what his kingdom was going to be like. So the Messiah is going to be a lion of the tribe of Judah. Now it doesn't say it's going to be majestic like a lion, so we don't know what aspect of the lion that the Messiah is going to be like. So he might be majestic, because lions can be majestic, or lions can be um, are known as the king of the of the jungle, so maybe it's the fact that he's going to be a king. But they also devour prey, and they also roar, and they also protect their young. What aspect of the lion is the Messiah going to be like? And that was in Genesis. And then in Isaiah, the Messiah is going to be a light to the Gentiles. Well, if there's going to be a light, it implies that there's a darkness. Is that a physical darkness? Or what kind of darkness would that be that would need a light? And what would it mean to be the light in this darkness, which maybe isn't a physical darkness? And so the writers are encouraging you to get to consider what does it mean to be light and then to ponder what would that mean for the Messiah? Then another one they use is the shepherd of the flock. So the Messiah is going to be a shepherd of the flock. Now, sometimes these prophecies had a dual meaning. They had a meaning for now, and they, which was when it was written, and they had a meaning, or in the near future, for far in the future, prophet, prophetic um, further on. And... Um, David, when he was becoming king, was told that he was to be a shepherd of his people. Now, David had already been a shepherd of the sheep when he was younger. And it's like God is saying, I want you to take that skill set that you learned when you were shepherd of a sheep, of the sheep. And I want you to apply it to being shepherd of my people. And it became quite a common uh, usage for the kings to be known as shepherds of the people. Now, we're told that the Messiah is going to be like King David. So, is the Messiah going to be a shepherd of sheep? Or will he need to be a shepherd of people? Isaiah, in, in um, chapter 9, he had 
a prophecy that had a dual meaning. He talked about a son being born. And in fact, Isaiah's wife did have a son. And so it had a meaning for them, but it also had a meaning for the coming Messiah. Because Isaiah's son did not meet all the criteria of the coming Messiah. And so it can lead to difficulties of interpretation, people having different ideas about what it meant. But it's about us considering what, what's there and about us pondering what's there. Now, some of the prophecies are very clear. The Messiah is going to be of the line of Abraham, Isaac and Jacob. He's going to be an Israelite. He's going to come from the tribe of Judah and he's going to come from the line of King David. And one of the prophecies tells us that he's going to be born in the same place that David was born in Bethlehem. And that's really interesting. I was thinking about that. Why Bethlehem? Because actually Jerusalem was known as the city of David. Wouldn't it have made more sense for him to be born in Jerusalem, in that city? Or maybe, like King David, the Messiah is going to start off in Bethlehem, being born in Bethlehem. And at some point in the future, he will ride into Jerusalem, have a, a robe and a scepter and a crown and be lifted up and claim to be the king of the Jews in Jerusalem. Maybe that's a way that he will be a king, David. And so we are invited to consider these metaphors, these prophecies, these picture words that the Old Testament writers have put there. Um, and so we have other ones. There's a picture of the Messiah being a branch from the stump of Jesse. Is that just talking about his line, the descendant line that he's come from? Or can we look at that picture a little bit more and consider, well, what happens to a branch? Does it matter what kind of tree it is or what plant it becomes? Or what's the role of a branch? Isaiah said his Messiah would be a suffering servant. And do we need to consider what the role of a servant is? Well, who is this person, the Messiah, going to serve? How did rich people view servants? How did poor people view servants? Who would a servant spend their time with? And so we're invited to consider what it is to be a servant and to ponder what that might mean for the Messiah. Moses said the Messiah was going to be a prophet like him. OK, so maybe we need to go back and consider Moses as a prophet, his role, what he did. And how will the Messiah be like that? There are other pictures um, of uh, the Passover lamb from Exodus and the son of man from Daniel 7. And Isaiah said that the government would be on the shoulders of the Messiah. What does that mean? What does that look like? It's a picture. And you, the, the reader, are being invited to consider what that picture might mean, to ponder what it might be for the Messiah to do that, to be the Prince of Peace. Who's the king? Who are the subjects? And so on this, our journey to Christmas, I invite you today to maybe pick one of those picture words that, that has been spoken about the coming Messiah and to ponder it. If you are creative, you might want to draw it. You might want to create it with your hands. Just start to consider what is the Messiah going to be like? What is his kingdom going to be like? Because there's been teasers put in the Old Testament for us to ponder and think about. And as Daniel said to Nebuchadnezzar, there is a God in heaven who reveals mystery. So we're not doing this alone. And we can ask God to help us understand more, discover more of God's Messiah and his kingdom through some of these pictures today. Let's pray. 
Heavenly Father, we ask that you would help us to understand what your people were trying to communicate through these pictures, what it would mean for the Messiah, what it would mean for your kingdom. Holy Spirit, we pray that you would give us understanding today as we consider and ponder these things. Amen. Tomorrow, Chris is going to come and we're going to start in the New Testament in Luke. And that's it from me. So we'll just say the grace together and then I'll leave you to your pondering. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. Amen.